Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Friday, November 30th, 2018. Today I'm going to recap last night's surprising Thursday night football game between the Saints and the Cowboys, NBA, NHL, college basketball, a baseball trade that's on the verge of happening, and then a baseball trade that happened just moments ago. I'll do my picks for college football for the weekend as well as NFL, and I'll give out my best bet of the night. All right. The Dallas Cowboys upset the New Orleans Saints 13-10. Very surprising win for the Dallas Cowboys. A big one, too, to get themselves to 7-5 and end in the driver's seat for the NFC East as the Saints drop only their second game all year and go to 10-2 and on the year. Dak Prescott, 24 of 28, 248 yards and a touchdown. Drew Brees, I thought it was his worst game of the year. 18 of 28, 127 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Like I said, big win for the Cowboys. Puts themselves in the driver's seat for the NFC East. And the Saints' brutal loss could cost them the one seed. All right. uh, NBA. Only three games last night. The Raptors defeated the Warriors 131-128 in overtime, which was a phenomenal game. Raptors go to 19-4. Golden State goes to 15-8. Kawhi Leonard... 37 points and 8 boards. Serge Ibaka had 20. Pascal Siakam had 26. Kyle Lowry had 10 with 12 assists. Danny Green had 13. Jonas Valanciunas off the bench had 12. Kevin Durant was the best player on the court last night, even in defeat. 51 points, 11 boards, 6 assists. Single-handedly kept them in that game. Klay Thompson had 23. Jonas Jarepko off the bench had 20. The Lakers defeat the Pacers 104-96, a much-needed win for the Los Angeles Lakers to go to 12-9. Indiana drops a 13-9. LeBron James, 38 points, 9 boards and 7 assists. Kyle Kuzma had 11 points and 9 boards. Brandon Ingram had 14. Off the bench, Catavius Caldwell Pope had 11. And Josh Hart had 13. Bojan Bogdanovic had 14. Thaddeus Young had 11. Victor Oladipo still not back yet. Off the bench, Devonta Sabonis had 20 with 15 boards. Doug McDermott had 10, and Corey Joseph had 10. The Clippers defeated the Kings 133-121. to As the Clippers improved to 15-6, and six, best in the West right now, as Sacramento drops to 10-11. and 11. Tobias Harris had 28 points and 6 boards and 4 assists. Daniel Gallinari had 16. Shea Gilligas-Alexander had 17. Avery Bradley had 16 off the bench. Montrezl Harrell had 24. Lou Williams had 10. De'Aaron Fox and Willie Cauley-Stein each had 17. Nemanja Bajika had 11. Buddy Heald had 10. Marvin Bagley off the bench had 18. Bogdan Bogdanovic had 26 off the bench, including three three three-pointers. Tonight's slate at 7 o'clock, you have the Cavaliers at the Celtics, the Jazz at the Hornets, the Bulls at the Pistons, the Wizards at the Sixers, 7.30, the Grizzlies at the Nets, 8 o'clock, the Pelicans at the Heat, the Hawks at the Thunder, ESPN, Rockets at the Spurs. The Rockets have just been a mess right now and uh, of late. They haven't played any defense. The Spurs here, to me, are poised for a good performance. They're actually getting a point at home. I don't get why the Rockets are favored in this spot at all. San Antonio at home, they're going to be motivated. They've had a couple weird games this year, the Spurs. I think this is their spot on national TV to show themselves, hey, we're for real. Yeah, we don't have Kawhi Leonard anymore, but DeMar DeRozan's here. LaMarcus Aldridge, is, he's still here, and we're good, and we're a, for real, and we have to be taken seriously, so... I like the Spurs here at home to get themselves back to 500 on the year. 9 o'clock, you have the Magic at the Suns. 10.30, the Mavericks at the Lakers. So a rare back-to-back home games for the Lakers. And at 10.30 on ESPN, you have the Nuggets at the Trailblazers. Two of the best teams in the West right now. Both of these teams can score. I like Damian Lillard and the Blazers at home. I think Lillard will be the best player on the court in this game. He's been putting up some ridiculous numbers. And I think that continues tonight. NHL. Big slate last night. The Blue Jackets defeat the Wild 4-2. Columbus 
improves to 15-8-2. Minnesota drops to 14-9-2. The number one star of the game with a goal and an assist. Riley Nash, the number two star of the game with two assists. Pierre-Luc Dubois in the number three star of the game with a goal. Marcus Hanneken. The Lightning defeat the Sabres 5-4 to end the Buffalo Sabres 10-game win streak. As Tampa improves to 18-7-1, Buffalo drops to 17-7-2. The number one star of the game with a goal, Cedric Paquette. The number two star of the game with a goal and an assist, Nikita Kucherov. And the number three star of the game with two goals, Sam Reinhardt. The Bruins defeat the Islanders 2-1 in a shootout. The Islanders drop to 12-9-3. Boston improves to 14-7-4. The number one star of the game, Ryan Donato. The number two star of the game with 28 saves on 29 shots. Tuka Raskin, the number three star of the game with a goal. Brad Marchand. The Senators defeat the Rangers 3-0. The Senators improve to 11-12-3. And the Rangers drop to 13-11-2. The number one star of the game with a goal and assist. Matt DeShane, the number two star of the game with 27 saves on 27 shots. Craig Anderson. And the number three star of the game with a goal and an assist. Drake Batherson. The Coyotes defeat the Predators 3-0. The Predators, along with the Saints, cost me the parlay yesterday on the podcast as the Diamondbacks, I'm sorry, the Coyotes go to 11-11-2 and, and the Predators drop to 17-8-1. The number one star of the game with 29 saves on 29 shots, the backup goaltender, Aiden Hill. The number two star of the game with a goal and assist, new Coyote, Nick Schmaltz. And the number three star of the game with a goal, Clayton Keller. The Jets defeat the Blackhawks 6-5. As the Jets go to 14-8-2, Blackhawks drop to 9-12-5. The number one star of the game with a hat trick, Nikolaj Ellers. The number two star of the game with three assists, Blake Wheeler. And the number three star of the game with two goals, Patrick Lane. The Oilers defeat the Kings 3-2. The Oilers improve to 12-11-2. The Kings drop to 9-15-1. The number one star of the game with an assist, Connor McDavid. The number two star of the game with a goal and an assist, Oscar Cliffbaum. And the number three star of the game with an assist, Drew Doughty. The Golden Knights defeat the Canucks 4-3 as the Knights improve the 14-12-1. The Canucks drop to 11-14-3. The number one star of the game with two goals, Max Pacioretty. The number two star of the game with two goals is Brock Boser. And the number three star of the game with two assists, Bo Horvat. Only five games on the slate tonight. You have the Sabres at the Panthers, the Devils at the Capitals. Those are two 7 o'clock games at 7.30. You have the Ducks and the Hurricanes. 9 o'clock again, the Blues and the Avalanche and the Kings and the Flames. Those are all... Pretty much toss-ups there, although I think the best bet to win tonight is the Calgary Flames, but teaser, they're not in my money line Parlay for today in the best bet. College Hoops, smaller slate than usual yesterday. Maris defeats Dartmouth 76-58. Maris goes to 2-4, Dartmouth drops to 3-4. LU Brooklyn defeats Albany 80 to 77. LU Brooklyn 4 and 3, Albany 2 and 5. Boston College defeats Sacred Heart 81 73. Boston College 6 and 1, Sacred Heart 3 and 5. UCF defeats Alabama 70 to 64. UCF 6 and 1, Alabama 5 and 2. James Madison defeats Coppin State 81 71 in overtime. James Madison 6 and 3, Coppin State 0 and 8. Campbell defeats Trinity Baptist 79 29. This Campbell goes to 4 and 3. Norfolk State defeats Hampton 94-89 in double overtime. This was a fun game. Norfolk goes to 4-5. Hampton drops to 2-5. NCAT defeats Central Connecticut State 72-60. NCAT improves to 2-5. And, and Central Connecticut drops to 4-4. Four four. Belmont defeats Stamford 99-93. Belmont goes to 6-0. Stamford drops to 7-2. SMU defeats McNeese 91-59. SMU Goes to 5 and 3. McNeese drops to 2 and 4. North Florida beat, defeats Florida AM 81 62. North Florida goes to 3 and 5. Florida AM drops to 2 and 5. UAB defeats Alabama AM 67 57. UAB goes to 5 and 2. Alabama AM drops to 0 and 7. Chicago State defeats East West 90 to 67. Chicago State gets their first win. They're one and eight. 
Austin P defeats Troy 79-74 in overtime. Austin P goes to 3 and 4. Troy drops to 3 and 4. Southern Utah defeats San Diego Christian 111 to 64. Southern Utah goes to 4 and 1. Texas Southern defeats Hust Hill 81-76 as Texas Southern goes to 3 and 4. Arizona defeats Georgia Southern 100 to 70. Arizona goes to 5 and 2. Georgia Southern drops to 5 and 2. Idaho State defeats Mountain Western 74-66, Idaho State goes to 3-3. Three three. Santa Clara defeats Jackson State 81-70. Santa Clara improves of 2-5. Jackson State drops to 1-7. Cal Baptist defeats UC Riverside 80-70. Cal Baptist goes to 3-4. UC Riverside drops to 2-6. UC Davis defeats Northern Arizona 73-57. UC Davis goes to 2-6. Northern Arizona drops to 2-3. Santa Barbara defeats Sacramento State 75-58. Santa Barbara improves to 6-1. Sacramento State drops to 3-1. That was their first loss of the year. Loyal Marymount defeats Bethesda 106-50 as Loyal Marymount remains undefeated at 8-0. Number 21, Buffalo defeated Milwaukee 96-77. That game was at 5.30 this morning as Buffalo improves to 6-0 and, and Milwaukee drops to 2-5. Today's slate, we have a couple finals already. San Francisco defeats Stephen F. Austin, 76-58. Moorhead State defeats Chilichote, 103-50. Dartmouth defeats Albany, 91-77. 2.30, you have LIU Brooklyn against Marist. 6 o'clock, number 9, Michigan State at Rutgers. So Big Ten play getting started today. 7 o'clock, Duquesne at Pittsburgh. Coastal Carolina at South Carolina. Number 25, Mississippi State at Dayton. That's a trap game. Radford at number 17, Texas. Delaware at Maryland Eastern. Appalachian State at East Carolina. Vermont at Towson. Niagara at St. Francis, Pennsylvania. UMBC at Northern Kentucky. Wagner at American. 7.30, Central Michigan at TCU. 8 o'clock on the Big Ten Network. Number 22, Wisconsin at number 14, Iowa. I really like Iowa to pull off the upset at home. Yes, it's an upset because they're a two-point underdog somehow. To Wisconsin, I guess Ethan Happ is the reason why Wisconsin's a favorite. But the wrong team's favorite here. Iowa should be a minus three at home against a one-loss Wisconsin. I like Wisconsin. I think they're a good team, but I just can't see them going to Iowa City and defeating Iowa. So give me Iowa at home here. And I like Michigan State, obviously, against Rutgers, although Rutgers has improved. 8.30, Colgate at South Florida and 10 o'clock on the Big Ten Network. You have Oklahoma State at Minnesota. This could be a swing game in terms of NCAA tournament teams and uh, resumes and stuff. I like Minnesota in that one in the U.S. Bank Stadium Basketball Classic. Now I'm going to move on to some baseball news. A trade that's on the verge of happening. Robinson Cano and Edwin Diaz are going to be sent to the New York Mets for Jay Bruce, Anthony Swarzak, and prospects. Jared Kalenic, Gerson Bautista, and Justin Dunn. Kalenic was the Mets' 2018 first-round pick, an outfielder. Justin Dunn was a 2016 first-round pick, a pitcher. Gerson Bautista is another pitching prospect. And the Mets are keeping Jeff McNeil out of the deal as of now, and I think that's a good decision because McNeil showed some promise last year. And... I think that this is a good move, quite frankly, for both teams. I think it's a win for the Mariners if they're able to get McNeil, or I'm sorry, McNeil and Kalenic in the deal. But keeping McNeil out would be wise if you're the Mets because McNeil showed some promise, but there is some thought that he could have been a flash in the pan. So that's the case for putting McNeil in over Kalenic. And then... Another reason why it's a win for Seattle is that they can flip Bruce and Swarzak and other deals down the road because they're heading, obviously, into a rebuilding situation. Meanwhile, for the Mets, Cano's an upgrade over McNeil at second base. That's obvious, for now at least, and within the next couple years, at least offensively. Although he's still pretty good defensively too, but we'll see how he is post-suspension. And post-suspension this season, he actually hit pretty well. So... Maybe this will turn out to be better than I thought from a Mets perspective from Cano. But Diaz is one of the elite closers in the game. He won the Mariano Rivera Award this year, or this past year. And he's certainly a better closer than Reyes Familia. 
So he'd be a good addition to the Mets and just watch him turn around and train Noah Syndergaard for prospects. And it would be insane. And New York would just be going crazy. And some other rumors and whatnot. Actually, this isn't a rumor. This actually happened. The Mariners traded reliever Alex Colomb to the Chicago White Sox for Omar Navarez, the catcher. I think the winner of this trade is easily the White Sox. They get themselves an arm in the bullpen. And if they're a surprising contender this year, Colomb could be a big part of that. And if the White Sox underachieve again, they could flip Colomb at the deadline for more prospects. And meanwhile, for Seattle, I guess Omar Navarez will end up being their catcher as they traded away Mike Zanino to the Tampa Bay Rays earlier in the offseason. And a rumor that I'm hearing going around right now, MLB Network was just talking about it. The Mets, or I'm sorry, the Dodgers and the Indians are talking about a deal that would send Corey Kluber to the Dodgers with Yasiel Puig, among others, coming back to Cleveland. I think that would be a win-win for both sides. The Indians need outfield help. Puig would really help the Indians, and Kluber would be a great addition atop that rotation with Clayton Kershaw and Walker Buehler, and they'd have easily the best big three in the game and would be the favorite to win the World Series if they had Corey Kluber. That's just facts. If the Dodgers are able to pull that off, they'd make themselves the prohibitive favorites to win the National League and favorites over the Red Sox, Yankees, and Astros to win the World Series, in my opinion. We'll get more into baseball as once the... Cano trade becomes official, and if anything else happens, winter meetings isn't for another few weeks. I believe that begins December 10th on a Monday. And maybe I'll do an updated predictions on that Sunday podcast when I usually would preview NFL Sunday on December 9th. So maybe I'll do winter meetings predictions on there too because... I have some uh, new thoughts and other ideas that could potentially happen this offseason. And I know the last podcast I did predicting trades and free agent signings and whatnot, that was before. That was actually the day the James Paxton deal happened. It was November 19th. I predicted that James Paxton would go to the Braves. He ended up going to the Yankees for a couple of prospects. So let's move on. College football picks for championship week. This is a fascinating week. Although there are some people out there that think it's going to go chalk and others that think that there could be some upsets on the way. Let's start with tonight. You have Northern Illinois against Buffalo, 7 o'clock ESPN 2 from Ford Field in Detroit. In the MAC title game, Northern Illinois seven and five on the year, six and two in conference fight. Buffalo ten and two on the year, seven and one in conference fight. The Vegas line of the Bulls as only a slim favorite suggests that this will be a close game. I look at it and see that the Bulls are clearly the better team. Someone knows something apparently. But I think the Bulls win a close one in Detroit to take home the MAC championship. So give me Buffalo here, and I'm going to do my gambling picks courtesy of DraftKings. So give me the minus three. Utah at Washington is also tonight, 8 o'clock on Fox. Utah is 17th in the country, 9-3 and on the season, 6-3 and in conference play. Washington, number 11 in the country, 9-3 and on the year, 7-2 in conference play. I think Washington is the best three-loss team in college football. These two teams met earlier in the season, and the Huskies came away victorious in Salt Lake City. This game is being played in Santa Clara, and with all the injuries the Utes have suffered of late, I think the Huskies take advantage and get a bid in the Rose Bowl. So give me Washington. I think they cover that five with ease. Saturday, the Big 12 championship game. Number 14, Texas against number 5, Oklahoma, 12 o'clock ABC. Texas, 9-3 and three on the year, 7-2 and two in conference play. Oklahoma, 11-1 on the year, 7-1 and one in conference play. They're a missed field goal away from being undefeated, and that's why I'd put them in the playoff over Ohio State if Georgia were to lose to Alabama. 
because Oklahoma's a missed kick away from being undefeated. Meanwhile, Ohio State got their butts kicked by Purdue about a couple months ago. These Longhorns are the only team to defeat the Sooners this season, courtesy of a game-winning field goal as time expired. Expect another high-scoring game in Jerry World, except for the Sooners to get revenge and perhaps clinch a spot in the college football playoff. So give me Oklahoma here. They're an eight-point favorite, but the play here is over 77 and a half. There's no way Oklahoma doesn't score less than 45. And you assume Texas is going to score over 30. So there you go. I could see this being like a 50 to 40 type of game, so the over would hit easily. Drake at number 23, Iowa State, 12 o'clock. This is a makeup game. Give me Iowa State. At home, they're obviously the better team. And I think that they easily cover the point spread of 42 and a half. They're just a better team than Drake. Louisiana at Appalachian State, 12 o'clock on ESPN. This is the Sun Belt Championship game. Louisiana, 7 and 5 on the year, 5 and 3 in conference play. Appalachian State, 9 and 2 in conference. The season in seven and one in conference play, with the Mountaineers hosting the game and they're flat out the better team. I'd be somewhat surprised if this wasn't a double digit win for the Mountaineers. So give me the Appalachian State Mountaineers. They're laying sixteen, and I think they cover that with ease. This is a twenty point game. This feels like forty twenty or even thirty ten or thirty five fifteen, thirty five fourteen, something like that. East Carolina at North Carolina State, 12 o'clock on the ACC Network. I think NC State wins. They're laying 23, but the play here is over 61. Both of these teams can score the football. And I think East Carolina is going to come out and play well for their intern coach. Akron at South Carolina, 12 o'clock on the SEC Network. Makeup game, South Carolina already has a bull spot. I think they win this game. Akron doesn't play any defense, but the play here is over 56. And South Carolina showed me a lot in that Clemson game offensively in that game. Marshall at Virginia Tech, 12 o'clock on the ACC Network. This is another makeup game. I was tempted to pull the trigger and pick Marshall to pull off the upset. But Virginia Tech, I think, wants to be in a bowl game. So give me Virginia Tech here to win. They're only laying three and a half, but the play here is going to be over 51. All right, the Conference USA Championship game. UAB against Middle Tennessee, 130 on CBS Sports Network. UAB 9-3 on the year, 7-1 in conference play. Middle Tennessee 8-4 on the year, 7-1 in conference play. These two teams just played each other last weekend, and the Blue Raiders came away victorious. The Raiders are a short favorite on their home turf, and I think they knock off the Blazers a second straight week at home to win the Conference USA. So give me Middle Tennessee. They're only a one-point favorite, and I'm laying the one. Norfolk State at Liberty, 2 o'clock on ESPN 3. Give me Liberty, and I think they cover the point spread with some ease. Stanford at California, 3 o'clock on the Pac-12 Network. This is a makeup game. These teams were supposed to play a few weeks ago, but the game got postponed due to the wildfires out there in California. The Golden Bears are home and are poised to end their losing streak to the Cardinal. So, give me Cal here at home. And they're getting three and a half. Give me the three and a half. They're winning this game outright. The American Conference Championship game. You have Memphis at number eight, UCF, 330 on ABC. Memphis 8-4 and four on the year, 5-3 and three in conference fight. UCF's undefeated at 12-0, and, and they're 8-0 in conference fight. Too bad Mackenzie Milton broke his leg and is going to miss the remainder of the season. The Tigers take advantage and spoil a second straight undefeated season for the night. So give me Memphis at UCF for the win. Game of the day. Number one, Alabama. Number four, Georgia. Rematch of last year's championship game and the SEC title game for this year. Both teams are 12-0 and 8-0 and in conference play. This is perhaps the game of the year in the college football season. The winner is in the playoff and, quite frankly, in the right circumstances. And if things break right for the loser, they could be in too. The Bulldogs will be motivated and seeking revenge after losing the heartbreaker in the national title game a year ago to the same Princeton Tide team. 
But Tua Tagovailoa is just too much for the Bulldogs to handle as the tide will roll into the college football playoff for the fifth year in a row. So give me Alabama. The point spread's 11.5. The over-under is 63.5. I like the over better than the minus 11.5 because I think Georgia can keep this thing close. So I'm going to give you two picks because this is a, such a great game. I'm going to give you the plus 11.5 for Georgia and over 63.5. I think this is like a 37-30 type of ball game. And that would easily go over. 7.45 on ESPN, you have the Mountain West Championship game, number 25 Fresno State at number 22 Boise State. Both teams are 10-2 in the year and 7-1 in conference play. These two teams hooked up a few weeks ago and the Broncos came from behind to defeat the Bulldogs. Two very good teams here and the winner of this game will go to a New Year's Six Bowl, assuming my prediction of UCF losing comes true. The Broncos are pretty much unbeatable on the Smurf turf and I think they find themselves in a New Year's Six Bowl. Again, assuming UCF loses. So give me Boise State here. They're laying a point, and I will lay that point easily. Number two, Clemson against Pittsburgh. 8 o'clock, ABC, the ACC championship game. Clemson 12-0 on the year, 8-0 in conference play. Pitt 7-5 on the year, 6-2 in conference play. Pitt's the worst team that's playing in a championship game in terms of Power 5 teams. This is such a big mismatch here in Charlotte, it's not even funny. If the Tigers somehow lose this game, they may not even make the playoffs because this would be such a bad loss considering how bad the ACC is this year with some teams disappointing such as Duke and Virginia Tech and Miami. NC State really didn't stand out. Syracuse fell apart at the end of the year. Boston College fell apart at the end of the year. So ACC not good as a whole. That said, the Tigers have a bit of revenge on their mind because the Panthers defeated them in Death Valley a few years back, and they'll win this game big. So give me Clemson. They're laying 27.5, but to me the play here is over 52.5 because I think Clemson might score 50 by themselves, and I think Pitt can score 20, and that just gets it done easily. Number 21, Northwestern versus number 6, Ohio State, 8 o'clock on Fox. Northwestern's 8-4 and four on the year, 8-1 in conference play. Northwestern just finished the year strong. Ohio State 11-1 on the year, 8-1 in conference play. This is a fascinating game in Indianapolis. The Buckeyes have only played one complete game all season, which was last weekend at home against Michigan. The Wildcats have been red hot of late. And have always thrived as underdogs under Pat Fitzgerald. I expect this to be a close and high scoring affair for the Buckeyes to get a few key stops late to make its case for the college football playoff. So give me Ohio State the win, but Northwestern to cover the 14 and a half. The over under 61, I think that sounds just about right. So give me Northwestern plus the 14 and a half. I think this is at most a 10-point game. I can't see this being more than a 10-point game. So give me Northwestern and the points here to cover the 14 and a half. NFL's up next for the weekend. I'm all in one on the week. I picked the Saints yesterday, as most of people did, and most people were wrong. All right, Sunday you have the 6-5 and five Ravens at the 4-7 and seven Falcons, 1 o'clock on CBS. The Ravens are coming off a home win over the Oakland Raiders. The Falcons are coming off a Thanksgiving night divisional road loss in New Orleans against the Saints. This feels like a trap game for the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, who really has not been that impressive. The Falcons' offense comes alive against a suddenly vulnerable Ravens defense. Atlanta 27, Baltimore 20. 5-6 and six Denver Broncos at the 5-6 and six Cincinnati Bengals, 1 o'clock on CBS. The Broncos are coming off a huge home win over the Pittsburgh Steelers to keep their playoff hopes alive. The Bengals are coming off a dismal Divisional home loss against the Cleveland Browns and Andy Dalton was lost for the season with a torn ligament in his thumb. Jeff Driscoll is now the starting quarterback, and I don't see how they beat a hot Bronco team led by their great pass rush. Denver 30, Cincinnati 16. The 10-1 Los Angeles Rams at the 4-7 Detroit Lions, 1 o'clock on Fox. The Rams are coming off their bye, and two weeks ago they won at home over the Kansas City Chiefs on a Monday night in a high-scoring affair. The Lions are coming off a Thanksgiving divisional home loss against the Chicago Bears. 
The Lions seem like a team that's thrown in the towel, and the Rams are a team that's looking to get home field advantage. Rams 37, Detroit 20. 2 and 9 Arizona Cardinals at the 4 6 and 1 Green Bay Packers, 1 o'clock on Fox. The Cardinals are coming off a road loss in Los Angeles against the Chargers. The Packers are coming off a Sunday night divisional road loss in Minneapolis against the Vikings. The Packers badly need this game to get themselves right, and against a bad opponent, I believe they'll get it done, and this is my lock of the week. Prediction Green Bay 30, Arizona 17. The 4 and 7 Buffalo Bills at the 5 and 6 Miami Dolphins, 1 o'clock on CBS. The Bills are coming off a home win over the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Dolphins are coming off a road loss in Indianapolis against the Colts. This is truly an awful game, and I think the Dolphins will win a low-scoring game at home. Prediction, Miami 17, Buffalo 13. The Chicago Bears at the New York Giants. Bears 8-3, Giants 3-8, 1 o'clock on Fox. The Bears are coming off a Thanksgiving divisional road win in Detroit against the Lions. The Giants are coming off a brutal divisional road loss in Philadelphia against the Eagles, in which they had a 16-point lead in and pretty much ended their chances of making the postseason. The Bears' defense is poised to have the critics saying that Eli Manning should hang it up after the season and they should win this game easily, regardless of who's starting at quarterback. Chicago 16, Giants 13. 6-5 Six Carolina Panthers at the 4-7 and seven Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 1 o'clock on Fox. The Panthers are coming off a brutal home loss against the Seattle Seahawks. The Buccaneers are coming off a home win over the lowly San Francisco 49ers. The Bucs' offense... Look good the past few weeks, but against bad defenses in the 49ers and the Giants. And the Panthers' defense isn't that bad. So I like Cam Newton and the Panthers to get a big win to keep their playoff hopes alive. Carolina 30, Tampa Bay 20. The 6-5 and five Indianapolis Colts at the 3-8 Jacksonville Jaguars, 1 o'clock on CBS. The Colts are coming off a home win over the Miami Dolphins. The Jags are coming off a road loss in Orchard Park against the Bills. Cody Kessler is starting at quarterback over the bench Blake Bortles now, and I don't see how it gets better for the Jags as the Colts have been hot and will win their six in a row. Prediction, Indianapolis 34, Jacksonville 16. The 4-6-1 and one Cleveland Browns at the 8-3 and three Houston Texans, 1 o'clock on CBS. The Browns are coming off a divisional road win in Cincinnati against the Bengals. The Texans are coming off a big Monday night divisional home win over the Tennessee Titans. The Texans have been hot of late, and I like them to win their ninth in a row in their pass rush to slow down Baker Mayfield and the Browns' offense. Prediction, Houston 30, Cleveland 23. And I forgot to give out the gambling picks for the 1 o'clock games. I'll just do it now, and then through the rest of the, the picks, I'll give out the gambling pick after the straight-up pick. Cardinals-Packers, the play here is the over 43.5. I just don't think the Cardinals' defense is any good. I think Rodgers is poised for a good game after he had some critics last week. Ravens-Falcons over 49.5. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Falcons minus 1.5. Hmm. Miami-Buffalo under 40. Carolina-Tampa Bay. Let's go with the Panthers minus 3.5. Bears Giants, let's take the Bears minus the three and a half. The Browns and the Texans. Let's roll with over forty eight. Denver Cincinnati, let's roll with the minus five with the Broncos. Colts Jaguars, let's go Colts minus four. Rams Lions. Let's go with Rams minus nine and a half. And now to the four o'clock games. The three and eight New York Jets at the five and six Tennessee Titans, four o'clock on CBS. The Jets are coming off a divisional home loss against the New England Patriots. The Titans are coming off a bad Monday night divisional road loss in Houston against the Texans. The Jets are probably starting Josh McCown again this week, and I can see Marcus Mariota putting up good stats against bad Jets defense. And leading the Titans back to 500. Tennessee 27, Jets 16. Kansas City Chiefs 10 and 1 at the Oakland Raiders 2 and 9, 405 on CBS. The Chiefs are coming off a bye, and two weeks ago they lost a tough one in Los Angeles against the Rams. The Raiders are coming off a road loss in Baltimore against the Ravens. This feels like a lopsided Chiefs win to me, led by Patrick Mahomes in that offense. Kansas City 42, Oakland. 
20. Let's go with over 55 and a half in the Chiefs Raiders game and over 40 and a half for Titans Jets. The game of the day, the Minnesota Vikings 6-4 and 1 at the New England Patriots 8-3 425 on Fox. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Aaron Andrews on the call. The Vikings are coming off a big time Sunday night divisional home win against the Green Bay Packers. The Patriots are coming off a divisional road win in East Rutherford against the New York Jets. This is going to be an intriguing game by all aspects, and I think it's a feel-good win for Bill Belichick and company at home in a super close one. Let's go with New England 27, Minnesota 24. I think the plus 5 is the play here. I think this is a field goal game. Either way. But I'm saying the Patriots win. The 2-9 San Francisco 49ers at the 6-5 Seattle Seahawks, 425 on Fox. The 49ers are coming off a road loss in Tampa Bay against the Buccaneers. The Seahawks are coming off a big-time road win over the Carolina Panthers. The Seahawks are playing great football and need this game, and Russell Wilson is playing like an MVP candidate. Seattle 33, San Francisco 16. Give me the minus 9.5 with the Seahawks. Sunday night, Los Angeles Chargers at 8-3 against the Pittsburgh Steelers at 7-3-1. 820 on NBC. The Chargers are coming off a much needed home win over the Arizona Cardinals. The Steelers are coming off a brutal road loss in Denver against the Broncos. The Steelers are poised for a big time performance at home in prime time, and I think that's the case here. Pittsburgh 38, Chargers 27. The play here is over 51 and a half. Monday night, the 6 and 5 Washington Redskins at the 5 and 6 Philadelphia Eagles 815 ESPN. This feels like a loser leaves town match. The Redskins are coming off a Thanksgiving Day divisional road loss in Arlington against the Cowboys. The Eagles are coming off a huge and much-needed come-from-behind divisional home win against the New York Giants. Colt McCoy wasn't terrible in that Cowboys game last week, but I don't trust him outdoors and in the cold on a Monday night as the Eagles get back to 500. Philadelphia 27, Washington 17. The play here is the minus 6.5, although I don't feel good about it. And that's it for the picks. Right now I'm going to give you my best bet of the day. Courtesy of FanDuel. Let's go with the Washington Huskies. By the way, this is a Moneyline Parlay. The Washington Huskies, the Detroit Pistons, the Philadelphia 76ers, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and in college basketball, South Carolina, Delaware, Northern Kentucky, Texas, American, and TCU. That's 10 teams. Plus four seventy four. I'm wagering a dollar forty five cents to win six dollars and eighty eight cents with a payout of eight dollars and thirty three cents. And that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping NBA, NHL, college basketball, any baseball news that breaks. Let's see if the Robinson Cano trade comes through or not. And I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.